this special AM 1450 live sports broadcast. Taylor Smith, wide open shot from three-point land. It's good! It's good! Beautiful three-point shot. Set her feet, plenty of space, and knocked her down. We're knotted up at 29 apiece. There's 314 on the clock. It doesn't get any better than this. Katakin possession with the lead and eight seconds on the clock. Wow, a lot of contact here under the basket. Yeah, no wow. foul call. Shoots the three, and she makes it at the buzzer, and the Cougars win by one. One lead, 37 to 36. Katakin brought a nice road crowd with them. Great crowd here tonight. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Linganore High School, home of the Lancers. We have some exciting girls' high school basketball for you tonight. The Linganore Lancers hosting the Catoctin Lady Cougars here at Linganore High School. We are going to be uh, bringing you this game. My name is Michael Betteridge. I'll be doing your play-by-play. -play. Joined here at courtside with Mike Reinick, our videographer, Tyler Wilhelm. Mike, you know, they're, they're introducing the players right now. Mike, both teams are rebounding nicely from disappointing losses. Catoctin uh, turned it around with three wins since a two-game slide. And Leonor in its lone loss to Winst Westminster. I know you talked to coach, assistant coach Connor about that loss. What would you come up with? Yeah, he uh, said that they controlled the game for the most part for three quarters and then got a little lackadaisical during the uh, fourth quarter and uh, ultimately made some substitutions early and uh, paid for that. So he said he, they learned a little bit about themselves uh, that, you know, uh, while they're having a great season and they're uh, really competitive, they really do have to keep the pedal to the metal for the whole game. And, and uh, Michael, you know, you've seen Catoctin play, and we saw them in the state championship game last year. And we know if there's one thing about these girls, they, they're going to compete uh, from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. And uh, Linganore's uh, going to get a good test tonight. They certainly are. And uh, I think, you know, I was looking at this, and on paper, Linganore really, they have the better team. But um, this should motivate the Catoctin Lady Cougars even more, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, Catoctin in the uh, – uh, small school division of the CMC. Uh, they find themselves trailing Williamsport, so they don't really have a, uh, uh, they're not playing to try to win and get to the CMC championship game, but they are playing to get themselves better for a run, a deep run in playoffs. And so they, this is an opportunity for me, for for them to, to uh, kind of establish themselves and, and hopefully give themselves an opportunity to uh, really thrive in this setup. I think for Catoctin, this is the best team they'll face in the regular season. Now, like I said, you're, you said it all. A win tonight would give them huge momentum. But uh, Catoctin has a brutal schedule. They finish Linganore tonight, and then they play Williamsport and Walkersville to close out the regular season. Yeah, and, uh, you know, like I said, that kind of gets you, get you ready for the postseason. But the other hand, you got to hope you get there in injury-free and, and ready to play. So, uh, yeah, it's an interesting, uh, at least for me, uh, balance that these coaches got to remember that they want to peak, but at the same point in time, uh, can leave themselves in a good position to be able to compete for those uh, four or five games that they hope to get to the University of Maryland. Yeah, there's about six games left in the regular season. We'll step aside for our first break and be right back after this message from our sponsors. Busy with plenty of commitments, that's why Anytime Fitness is the perfect way to stay in shape. From either home or work, Anytime Fitness of Thermont is always close by, and they're open 24-7. They can tailor a personalized training program to fit your workout needs. Anytime Fitness can also fashion a membership and payment plan that will be flexible enough for your on-the-go lifestyle. You'll love the 24-hour co-ed fitness center with state-of-the-art equipment designed to sculpt and tune you into shape. And when you're away from the Thermont area, your membership guarantees you access to any of the over 1,000 clubs worldwide. Visit us at 130 Frederick Road to start your program today. Now you can stay healthy and Anytime with Anytime Fitness. And now a small business setback. Set to smooth jazz. It's night. You're driving in the rain with only one thing on your mind. The deer about to total your HVAC van. But with progressive. 
of 30 plus customizable coverage options, you're covered. The rest is just saxophone. When running your small business gets rough, Progressive Commercial is there to smooth it out. Get a quote in as little as six minutes at progressivecommercial.com. Twinkly sound. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates coverage and discounts not available for all vehicles or states. Policy terms and conditions apply. We are back here live at Leonore High School. Uh, some exciting girls basketball here tonight. Uh, the Leonore team comes in to this game, coached by Rachel Easterday, 14 and 1, 9 and 0 in the CMC, coach. Yeah, I, I think one of the interesting things, Michael, is they had a lot of injuries last year, so they had a lot of young ladies get playing time as un, as underclassmen, and now they're, they're, they're still with a lot of sophomores and juniors on this team, and uh, they got all those people back that had, had not been playing. So so they got a lot of talent, and sometimes Coach Easterday's uh, biggest challenge is figuring her rotation. Well, we've got two of our starters out on the floor ready for the tip-off, and there it is, and it goes to the Lady Cougars. So Cougars controlling out front to Taylor Smith. Taylor Smith guarded by Grace Wilson. She dribbles off the pick, goes straight to the hoop off the glass and misses the layup, but a rebound, Catoctin. Linganore's in a man-to-man, -man, Michael. They're gonna try to pressure, and we know that uh, this young lady Smith, the uh, Lancers and uh, Cougars have met each other many times, uh, and she's been a key part of it. So Catoctin, again, Taylor Smith drives the lane can't make the runner, and it's knocked out of bounds, Cougars ball, so they'll get a third shot at this right here. On the break, what, Brooke Williams scores a no, Orndorff, Samantha Orndorff on the cutter underneath. They say they came up and set a high screen at the foul line, and she came off of it. Uh, Linganore's first chance with the ball. Out front to Trinity Lindblade. Now I've got a whistle. And a foul. Looks like they're going to call a push on the baseline on number 10, uh, uh, Grace Williams. And uh, the one thing I look at these two teams, Michael, uh, Linganore's got a bench full of subs, and Catoctin's only got another five players in, in uniform. So the foul trouble they can't afford to get into. Tipped away and knocked away by Orndorff. Great defensive play on the inbound. That is right, and that's the difference between a 1A and a 3A school. I think you said, Michael, uh, one of the keys to the offense for Catoctin is their defense. And you can see there, they're pressuring all inbounds passes and uh, like, and overplaying in the lane, almost a steal. Straight to the hoop, the runner off the glass, no good. Rebound, Katoxin, here comes Smith down the right side. She goes right to the basket with the layup and misses it. The putback is blocked on Brooke Williams. She does a kick out to the corner, and then Smith shoots from the corner on the handoff, no good. Loose ball, rebound, Katoxin. Katoxin, and there's a steal! by Wilson, coming back the other way, she scores. 6.41 remaining, 2-2. And Linganore is gonna pick up in kind of token pressure. Uh, I don't think they can really pressure Smith bringing up the court, so they're picking her up at half court. Down on the left side they go. Looking underneath, faking a drive to the hoop. Off the glass, no good. Rebound, Katoctin, she gets her own rebound. Underneath, we've got a trip underneath, no whistle. And it's Linganore ball. Well, that's the fifth offensive rebound for Catoctin, and we're two minutes into the game. Triggering the inbound for Linganore is uh, Julia Mitchell, and she gets it into uh, Trinity Lindblade, who is the point guard for Linganore, and she sets the offense. Lindblade down on the left side. Post high key to Hummel. Now a whistle, and I believe... Offensive foul yeah. against Meg Hummel. Hummel with the elbow, I guess. A little push off, or is that? What, or I'm sorry, number 11, not make them. Tristan Colburn with the uh, with the push off. So that's her first and the team's fir first personal foul. Tocton has it in the backcourt. Smith brings it up down the left side. Versus direction, loses the ball, gets it back. We've got a whistle underneath and a foul on the floor. That one's going to go on Lindblade. Actually, uh, she stepped on the sideline. Oh, and okay, did, all right. She was uh, maintained her pivot foot, but stepped on the black sideline, so it's going to be a turnover. Into Lindblade. Linganore rifles it down to the left side. Back out front to the lane. Drive. Shot partially barked. Rebound. Cougars tied up in the lane. Kick out front. 
Here comes Grace Williams on the run. She pulls up, shoots the five-footer off the glass and scores. Nice jump stop there. We don't see enough of that in the high school game. Everyone wants to make the floater. She's a jump shot and made the quickie. Let the defense slide right by her. That's Lindblade with the ball. Lindblade down on the left side. Off the pick she goes. Defense switches, playing man coverage now. The Lady Cougars. Coach Stolen. Ed. Here comes the Cougars. Outlet to Smith. Right hander, and she scores. 6 2 Cougars. Coach Entwistle really wanting them to pressure the ball, create the turnovers, create offense from defense, like we said. And notice they don't score much on the layup. They're not very good from the field, but boy, they can. That transition ball game that they play is where they get all their points. Shot from the wing, three pointer, short off the front rim. Rebound, Grace Williams. And the Cougars Orndorf. look to run off the defensive rebound. Orndorff out front. Skip pass to Taylor. Taylor looks. Bounce pass inside. Williams turns and scores. 8-2 Catoctin. Linganore trying to get into their offense and having a difficult time. Off the pick goes Lindblade. Down on the right side to Colburn. She lobs it back in to Hummel. Hummel out front to Mitchell. Mitchell spins, turns, shoots on the run. Whoa, an off-balance shot off the glass for the score. 8-4, we're halfway through the first quarter, and Taylor Smith does not stop. She comes right down court. Outlet to Hummel. She goes up, she stops and shoots and scores. Off the outlet pass by Mitchell. 8-6, 8-6, Cougars in the lead. Running and gunning they are at the 342 mark of the first period. Here comes Taylor Smith. Down on the left side, straight to the hoop, and a foul on the wrist. Orndorf. That's going to be two on Colburn. Colburn, one of the leading scorers for Linganore, now going to be on the bench with two. And coming in is uh, Emma Bowers for Linganore. First substitute off the bench, number 31, Emma Bowers takes her place. Catoctin no! scored on their first inbounds pass. Brooke Williams off the cut cutter on the back door, misses the layup. And down we go, Julia Mitchell. Hummel goes straight in, no look, bounce pass. In and out, rebound Cougars. Here come the Cougars on the run. Taylor Smith down the left side, looks, turns, goes and has it blocked out of bounds by Lindblade. She went with the Euro step, and the one thing about that is why that creates some separation. She didn't, she wasn't able to elevate it all in the shot, and Lindblade was able to knock it away. She went up with her right hand on the left side. That puts the ball right in front of the defender. Smith is going to trigger the inbound to the corner. Three-pointer. In and out. Loose ball. Rebound Smith. Another shot from Book Williams out front. And this one's all the net. A three-pointer, the first one of the game for Book Williams. Offensive rebounding is definitely uh, going to be a it's a strong point for Catoctin, but it's going to be something Linganore is going to have to solve here early on. Lindblade off the pick. She goes right hard to the basket. On the outside, shoots on the run and draws the foul. So Lindblade will step to the free throw line to shoot two. And that's uh, foul's going to be on Grace Wills Williams again. That's her second. And uh, Catoctin may have to go to the bench here early with three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Lindblade's a, sh a sharp shooter. We'll see how she does in the free throws. Got it. Lindblade hit six trays, including five in the first half against Oakdale last Monday. She, you're right about sharpshooter, and she goes, she goes from outside, doesn't she? Yeah, and in fact, she made the game winner, uh, the against Oakdale, the first go round, uh, I believe, at, at uh, Linganor. Offensive rebound for the Lancers, and yeah. Mitchell puts it back up and in. And that was bad communication because one Cougar knocked it out of another Cougar's hands and right into the hands of the Lancer. Lobbed inside, Williams goes right, no, Smith rims in and out. Rebound, Lindblade coming up. Down on the left side, straight to the hoop, kick out, three-pointer. Too hard off the back iron, rebound, putback no good. And we've got a foul on the putback, so it looks like Julia Mitchell will shoot two. And the foul's on number 22, recently entered in the game, uh, Kylie Perhotch for uh, the uh, Cougars, and she was just out of position. Uh, Mitchell with the chance to tie the game with 223. Misses the front end. She has one left. Uh, 
Not sure. We'll have to keep an eye on this, uh, Michael. Uh, when Grace Williams came out of the game, she immediately ran off the bench and back to the locker room. She's coming back now. Another, su other, another substitute for Catofton. Orndorff into the game. And uh, we also missed that, I think, uh, let's see, uh, did... Yeah, we missed uh, over here, Clot Felty. Clot Felty Kaden came into Glott the game. Kaden into the game now. And there's a steal by the Glancers, rifled underneath and stolen back by the Cougars, and now stolen back by the Lancers, and stolen back by the Cougars. Wow, four steals in a row, each team, one after the other. And I don't think the ball moved more than uh, <laughs> like a square yard during that whole thing. <laughs> Straight to the hoop. A lot of contact underneath, no whistle. Smith is driving baseline, and she's clearly getting ridden, ridden out of the, on the baseline and then tried to reach back, and uh, the ball went off her backside after the block shot. So Lingenor takes possession with Lindbergh bringing it up. Down on the left side. Running they, a weave. They weave it to Hummel. Shot on the run. And she gets the roll, and it's a... 12 to 11 game, Lin Linganore on top. Emma Bowers with that basket. The first time they really were able to run their half court offense. Orndorff underneath, Brooke Williams. She dribbles. Back over to Glottfeldy. Glottfeldy, bad pass, but they get it back. Taylor drives baseline, reverse layup, no good. Rebound is blocked. Meg Hummel with the rebound with the outlet to Mitchell, and here come the Lancers. High lead pass. Kick out to Lindbade. She misses the three. Rebound Lancers. Back out front to Hummel. She fakes and drives and travels. You know, Lindblade, we talked about her being really uh, a really strong outside shooter. Interestingly, that one she went with really quickly. The game's being played very fast, and, and uh, you got to be really careful uh, that you set yourself and play your speed. Two substitutes for the Lancers. Number 40. Uh, Kaylee Lake. Holy mackerel, how tall is she? Kaylee Lake, I think she goes at 5'10". No, no. Lake? That girl out there, she's 6'1". Kaylee Lake, and then also into the game for the Lancers is number 21 for the Lancers, Jessica Spellman. Glattfeldy lobs underneath Brooke Williams. She goes spin. Left-hander, no good. Rebound, knocked away. Cougars ball. Yeah, lot, they're letting them play underneath because there's a lot of contact. And uh, back into the game, or into the game for uh, the first time, is Rebecca Zentz. Zentz replaces uh, Taylor Smith, who you know has the ball in her hands a lot, has not had a lot of success. I think if you ask Coach Enwistle if this, they were down by one and Taylor Smith has no points, where would you be? Uh, you'd be pretty happy with that. Going to get a break here at the end of the first quarter. Lob out front to Zentz. Zentz goes left off the screen, loses the ball, gets it back, hands off to Orndorff. She shoots off her shoulder on the run. Loose ball, and there's a whistle at the buzzer. Catoctin gets it back. Glottfeldy shoots a 10-footer. It rattles and drops. I remember her from the state championship game last year. Strong outside shooter. She, that was a mid-range. Mitchell with 10 seconds at the top of the key. Shot from the wing. Too long. And that's going to be an offensive foul on the rebound on Bowers. I think that might be Bowers' second person, or that's her first personal foul. Third on the Lancers. And now with seven seconds left, Coach Entwistle immediately gets Taylor Smith back in for this offensive set. Yes, she does. Taylor goes hard to the basket. Kick out, no look. Glottfeldy from the corner. High off the glass, there's the buzzer. And at the end of eight minutes of action, the Catoctin Lady Cougars 13, the Linganore Lady Lancers 12, and we'll be right back.
Life is closed on weekends and Thursdays. Century of Life accepts all major credit cards and uses the honor system so you pay what you can afford. What an amazing difference they will make in you today. Center of Life, make an adjustment to your life today. Center of Life is a proud sponsor of local high school sports. All right, we are back live here. And the inbound goes to Linganor. And Lancers have their uh, starting lineup in with the exception of Bowers still playing for Colburn. They're in their weave offense. They scored off this set one time in the first quarter. Over to Lindblade, she has to do an acrobatic catch to save it, and she does. She drives to the basket, penetrates, kicks out to the corner, shot from the corner, too short, rebound, Cougars has it tipped away and stolen. Hummel, bounce pass underneath. Hummel shoots on the run off the glass, no good. Cougars come up with it, outlet to Smith. She's got a one-on-one. -on -one. She goes right-hander and doesn't score. Rebound, Perhatch. Perhatch, baseline. She shoots the runner, it's in. It's often backed up by one. Interestingly, the one thing about Taylor Smith is she wants to go right every time. So, you know, she, I think she had a better chance going to her left hand. She, brings she it back has to the no right. left. <laughs> she brings it back to the right, and unfortunately that brought it right back into the defense. It did. And it's predictable. Oh, stolen by Caden Gladfelty, one-on-one. And then she's fouled. And that should have been a technical right there. That's pretty good. Uh, Gladfelty did a really good job there. Uh, Emma Bowers was looking back to the bench for some direction. And she noticed that, you know, she wasn't really paying attention to her. And she made a quick uh, move for the ball, was able to get a steal. The Cougars, uh, the Cougars must have probably half dozen eight steals here in the first half. Cutter's not there, underneath, low, low ball, scooped up by Hummel. Hummel with the outlet. There goes Wilson, straight to the basket, she scores. Meg Hummel's really athletic, she's big, she's a Division I uh, lacrosse recruit at Coastal Carolina. Tipped away by Mitchell, out of bounds, Cougars ball, right in front of the crowd. Perhatch to inbound. Glottfeldy. She thought about it from the corner. Williams, she steps out, shoots the three. Oh, she gets a bank shot from the, from the corner. corner. I didn't know that was physical. I didn't know you could possible. do that. Yeah, that was an amazing <laughs> shot. Lynn, Br Lynn Blade brings it up. They're running the weave again to Bowers. Bowers to Hummel. Hummel to the top of the key. Spin move. Kicks it out to Bowers for the three. She shoots in and out. Oh, nice rebound, Lindblade, she steps out and shoots. Off balance shot, great rebound, pulled down by Mitchell. Kick out the Hummel, she shoots a five footer on the run, it doesn't go. This time Katakin has it, ripped away, jump ball. Jump ball, possession arrow favors the Cougars, and uh, it's a pretty physical game, Michael, like you Very said. physical, yes, gotta love it. And uh, coming back in uh, is Colburn with two fouls, Tristan Colburn, yeah. zero points, two fouls. Uh, they're going to look to get some uh, production out of her. Glottfeldy brings it up. These ladies are getting at it. I hope you're enjoying it. 5.52 to go in the first half. 18 to 14, Kadokton inside. Brooke Williams, high post. Glottfeldy off the pick. She has it stripped away. Wide open. Taylor Smith shoots. Too hard off the back iron. Rebound. Lady Lancers. Mitchell with the rebound over to Lindblade. Lindblade calls the play, signals the play from top of the key. Fires it down on the left to Hummel. Hummel looks underneath, nothing there. Back around to the right side, shot from the wing. It's a long one. Loose ball up in the air, it's knocked away. Lady Lancers get it back, knocked away again. Mitchell with a step back, no good. Rebound through the lane, a shot rolls in and out, and the Cougars finally get a rebound as Brooke Williams slows it down. It kind of looked like the first quarter for Catoctin. Five yes. shots on that possession for the Lancers, but could not get any points. They've moved Smith off the point guard, letting Gladfelty bring it up. That time Smith is out the outside. Traveling violation on Taylor. That head fake. I think Coach Endwistle is probably recognizing the fact that, uh, you know, they ask a lot from uh, Taylor Smith, but to bring the ball up court and everything, uh, you know, takes a lot out of her from a scoring potential. So I think they're uh, taking her off the ball right now and letting Gladfelty serve as the point guard. Lake back in and uh, number 19 in for the Lancers. Number 10, sorry, Grace Wilson back in. 
Drive to the basket, hits the floor. Scoop shot, no good. Loose ball in the lane. Grace Wilson gets the rebound. Reset to Lindblade. Lindblade looking for the high ball screen. Step back for Lindblade. Fade away, shot, no good. Rebound underneath, blocked. Loose ball, Katakin comes up with it. Glockfeldy down the right side. Reach in and a foul by Hummel. I'm not sure she got that big, that big of a piece of her, but she telegraphed it. And, and yeah. the other thing is she reached with her like her right hand, which was a whole way across the body, which isn't going to work. Great observation because the, the referee was behind the, the offensive player's body because couldn't, couldn't really do anything but guess. Oh, beautiful movement underneath and a score. Number 21 with the bucket for the Cougars. Peyton Davis with it off the feed from uh, the high post feed. Catoctin up by six now. Linganore can't get anything going. Baseline, Wilson on the run. Doesn't, doesn't go for her. Here come the Cougars. Stolen, right back the other way. Shot to score off the glass by Mitchell. That, no, that was Kristen Colburn who got that. Colburn, team. baseball pass down court goes over everybody's head. Yeah, the Cougars didn't need that one. They tried a long full court pass, and we're going to have a 30 second timeout. Coach uh, uh -oh. Easterday is going to take a second to talk about this with her crew. I think what we're, I think what we're seeing here in in this first half is both these teams are really wanting to play aggressively on the defensive end, and uh, uh, they're also looking to run a lot. And what we're what we're seeing in the game is that something Coach Little had talked to you about, that the girls aren't allowing the game to slow down to the speed that they need it to be at. And so I think uh, what the coach is probably talking a little bit about, like, hey, when we run our half-court offense, we get good shots. So how about we, you know, not be too helter-skelter, not try to be too aggressive, and uh, and, and play what we practice. So uh, it's going to be interesting, interesting four minutes here, Michael. Yes, the, it will. Catoctin's uh, uh, up by four, and they have played the almost the entire first half without Grace Williams. And Coach Entwistle is just going to let her stay on the sideline until uh, until they need her, and uh, she'll be able to get through and hopefully, you know, have three fouls for the second half. Down on the left side, Wilson has it. Looking underneath, she drifts, gives it to Lindbade. Lindbade does a step back. Between the leg dribble for Lindblade. Trinity, bounce pass underneath. Backs in, turns and shoots. Too hard off the back iron. Cougars come up with it. Outlet to Orndorff. Orndorff goes right. Brings it across midcourt, settles down. Over to Smith. Smith resets the offense. Taylor goes hard right. Wide to the hoop and scores. That's her first layup of the game. Once again, you said she crossed over at the top of the key and went to her right. Lingenor's really got to overplay her right hand and make her go to the left. Down on the right side to Colburn. Colburn directs traffic, looking, looking. She goes right, baseline, pull up on the run. No good, rebound Brooke Williams. She ties her up, jump ball, possession arrow Lingenor. One thing I'd, I'd give the uh, Catoctin Cougars, uh, their perimeter defense has been very good. They are up on Trinity Lindblade as soon as she gets the ball. And from what I can tell, Michael, it's really causing problems for the Lancers. Inbound stolen underneath by the Cougars. Here comes Glotfeldy. She bounce passes underneath. Step back, Glotfeldy shoots, no good. Loose ball, rebound, Colburn. Colburn loses it on the ground. Cougars come up with it. And oh. right into our table. We're getting to play a little bit there. Yep, that one bounced off my knee. It, so, you know, if we look at that sequence right there, Linganore got the rebound, and they're almost going too fast. They need to just slow down, make a good outlet pass. Instead, they try to dribble through traffic, turn it over, leads to an opportunity for Catoctin. So Lake and uh, Colburn are going out. Back in the game, Mitchell and uh, Bowers for uh, Linganore. Lindblade bringing it up at the point guard position. Trindy Lindblade running the weave. Meg Hummel takes it. And we got she a gets pushing. Bumped. bumped by number 22, Kylie Perhoff. I think that's her first, the team's might be her second. Coach was pretty quick to bring Taylor Smith back in. Fourth team foul on the Cougars as Taylor Smith checks back in. Here comes the inbound. Limblown bats underneath, shot to score. 
Beautiful play. Meg, Meg uh, Hummel came from the high post, right down the lane to the block and scored. Two minutes left, four point lead for Catoctin. Down the left side goes Smith. She goes right off the pick. Straight to the hoop she goes, off the glass, no good. Rebound Mitchell. Mitchell to Lindblade. Lindblade brings it up. She no looks to the corner. Shot from Wilson. It's good. Wilson gets the tray. That's a big three, 22-21. Lancers are within one. So they've whittled away at that six point lead the Cougars had coming into this. Block belly, she's guarded hard, behind the back dribble, off the pick, straight to the hoop, kicks it out, shot from the wing, short, underneath, Book Williams steps back, shoots, and she's fouled. Fouls on Meg Hummel, that's her second foul. And I believe uh, they'll probably uh, lead to two shots, two shots for number 25, Brooke Williams with the chance to uh, extend the lead for Katak. Lancers have one to give. Williams to shoot two. Missed it. Re-entering for the Lancers, uh, number 21, uh, Kalen Spellman, and uh, number 40, uh, Kaylee Lake are both back in, as well as number 11, Tristan Colburn. Williams to shoot one. Misses them both, rebound, number 21 for the Lancers. Uh, Spellman with the rebound, and she gets it quickly over to Lindblade, try to set up the half-court offense for Linganore. So the Cougars miss a two-point opportunity from the free throw line, and here comes the Lancers right back with a travel. That's by Spellman. Yeah, she uh, saw that she had a step, and she just kind of moved that pivot foot before she put the ball down on the ground. Davis into Smith. Smith brings it up. Guarded by Spellman. Down on the left side, Cougars, Glock Belty. She drives, pulls up. A lot of contact, she goes to shoot. It's on the line, Cougars ball. Yeah, I mean, uh, Gladfelty uh, or uh, uh, drove and she it looks like she got bumped twice on that drive and did not get a call. Taylor Smith to trigger. Oh, beautiful back. cutter and Brooke Williams is fat. No, is that Gladfelty? Yeah, Gladfelty on the cutter into the lane on the inbound and she'll shoot two. Fouled by Lake, who uh, had the, actually it is Brooke Williams that will be shooting two. Oh, my bad. No, so it's uh, shooting two, Brooke Williams with the chance once again to extend the lead. 54 seconds to go in the first half. She makes it. Cougars 23, Lancers 21. Coming back in the game, uh, uh, Orndorf for uh, Katofton giving Gladfelty a bit of a break here. Defense for off, offense for defense substitution. Got them both. William makes them both, three point lead. Lindblade brings it up with 50 seconds on the clock. Down, lobs it inside, loose ball, knocked away, Cougars have it. Taylor Smith, 43 seconds, 26 on the shot clock. Smith brings it up. Over to Orndorf inside, stolen, and then the Cougars steal it back. There's a scramble on the floor. Lindblade, she goes up, right-hander misses it. Through the lane, kick out. Mitchell backs in, right-handed, no good, and we've got a foul. Looks like Julia's going to shoot two now. Uh, I think that's uh, Kerry, Kaylee Lake who's in. Uh, no, no, you're right. Mitchell's back in the game. Uh, Mitchell's going to shoot two. That scramble was really uh, uh, an important play for Linganore because they really didn't want to go down by more than that. Mitchell makes Oh, it she gets the shooter's touch and roll. It hangs off the front iron on the rim for a split second, then it drops in. Coach uh, Easterday is getting Colburn out, so she doesn't pick up a third foul here in the last 21 seconds. Got them both. One point game now. Cougars have the ball. 21 seconds, no shot clock. Smith, she brings it up. She goes right, hard, off the pick, backs it out, spins, fires it over to Orndorff, down on the left side, bounce pass to Williams, she shoots too hard, loose ball, Williams steps on the line, Lancers ball with 1.7 seconds. So it looks like the Cougars are gonna take a one point lead to the dressing room. Let's see with the Lancers if they have a full court inbounds play. 
probably like a baseball pass of some sort. Nope. There it is. There's the pass. It doesn't even come close, and that's it. At the end of 16 minutes of action, the first half is in the books with the Catoctin Lady Cougars 24 and the Lady Lancers 23. We'll be right back after this message for our first half wrap-up. Thanks for tuning in. And Backhoe Service LLC is conveniently located at 108 North Carroll Street in Thurmont with over 40 years of experience in the plumbing industry, celebrating its 10th year serving our community, specializing in all phases of plumbing, including septic installation and repair. The favorite part of our job is meeting new people and knowing that we helped. Kelco Plumbing prides itself on a job well done with pricing that won't flood your budget. Burst pipes, water damage, clogged drains, replacement, remodel, or upgrades. Kelco Plumbing Service most major fixtures, faucets, water heaters, sump pumps, and well pumps and pressure tanks. Kelco Plumbing is certified and licensed in Maryland and Pennsylvania. Call them today at 301-788-9791. That's 301-788-9791. Emergencies or planned repairs, Kelco Plumbing will go out of their way to explain exactly what needs to be done in simple, easy to understand solutions. When a plumber's work is done, well, everyone is happy. Remember, a good flush. Beats a full house every time. Kelco Plumbing is a proud sponsor of high school sports on the radio. All right, we are back live at halftime here. In case you just joined us, the uh, Catoctin Cougars have a one-point lead, 24 to 23, and... Uh, that was a pretty interesting first half. Not what we expected. Just a run and gun and a lot of action, a lot of contact. Very physical first half, Mike. Yeah, looking at the uh, uh, scoreboard, you'd think like, oh, maybe a highly or a uh, highly contested defensive game, but it was more a matter of uh, uh, playing at a pace faster than the teams were used to. And I bet you there were as many points, as many turnovers as there were baskets. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Well, when you have high-speed games like this, you don't have high shooting games. You don't have good percentage shooting. Both teams, I guarantee you, shooting very poorly from the floor. If we looked at the stats, uh, you would see some very low shooting averages. But that's what happens when the game speeds up, and that's what Catoctin does. They realize, a coach Entwistle realizes she doesn't have the best shooters on the planet. Most of her team's a bunch of tenth graders. Her star player is a ninth grader. Her her center. Yeah. And so they're, she they're relies really, on the turnover and the and the transition ball game. Yeah, they're really scrappy with the way that they that they play, and uh, you know, I, uh, it's like Linganore is kind of in a bit of a dogfight right now, and and I think what they need to do is they need to figure out how they would like to. Uh, they they got to try to dictate the pace of the game. Right, right now, Katakin's dictating the pace of the game. And uh, there were a couple of times, I think, where he said where Linganore would get a defensive rebound and immediately would turn it over because they were just trying to do too much with the ball before they got, you know, into the front court. Well, clearly, Linganore has the better athletes. That's clear to see right now. They've got two girls that are much taller. They can sub in a couple more that are taller. If they start to figure that out and just run slow down that pace, slow down the offense, and start to work their low posts, they can beat this Cougars team. But the Cougars right now, you nailed it. They have they have dictated the pace for the entire first half. And if they continue to do this in the second half, they're going to come away with a W. Yeah, if you think about, uh, you know, going way back in the annals of basketball, uh, uh, John Thompson coached teams at Georgetown. They were notoriously poor shooting teams, but they just contested every hustle, pass hustle. and they did everything. Yeah. And it's kind of what Catoctin's doing here, where they're – they're really making it so that the entry pass is contested, the mm -hmm. outlet pass is contested. Mm -hmm. And like I said, one of the things that's impressed me more than anything else is their perimeter players on defense are extending out to Trinity Lindblade and not allowing her to get comfortable and, and just go into the offense. Yeah, that's a great point. I didn't think of that. Trinity, she's one of their top scorers. Uh, she's averaging, uh, let's see, uh, 22 points against Oakdale. Um, and, and they've been able to, and the trays are the things that are killing yeah, you with and we've Trinity. we've seen her take a couple of three-pointers, and they've been rushed. 
they, you know, she hasn't had her feet underneath her, and yeah. she's just really been firing them up. So I think, you know, if I was coach, uh, if I was coach Easterday, I'd probably be like, ladies, yeah. it's a tie game. Yeah. For the second half, we basically have to win by one point. You know, win by win by a basket. And then what I was going to say to him is that what I'd say to my team is, so how about we play Lancer basketball in the second half? Yeah. And yeah. not not Cougars. Cougars. Yeah. yeah. And uh, great point. And I think they'd be in, in good shape now. If I'm coach and whistle, I'm sitting there saying that Grace Williams played about four minutes of the first half, and we're winning by one. So I'm feeling pretty good, right? One of my better players, one of my better interior defenders is going to be able to come back and give me a little more size. So uh, I think both coaches should be optimistic coming in the second half, and uh, they've just got to – I think it's going to be really whoever dictates this uh, the pace of play and stuff is going to be the one who uh, – who wins this game. Right. All right, we'll be back. We'll have a break, a few minutes more to relax, enjoy ourselves. Got some more exciting girls basketball for you in the second half. Here you are on Cool Oldies 1450. One recent diner summed it up perfectly. This place is so good, the words are hard to find. It's a wonderful small town diner with awesome food and great service. Thermont Country Kitchen is located on Water Street in downtown Thermont. Open weekdays, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Saturdays, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And Sundays, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Remember when Grandma used to say, if you're looking for a great restaurant, follow the locals. And that's exactly what you'll find at Thermont Country Kitchen. A wonderful mixture of out-of-town guests, travelers up and down Route 15, and the locals who love Country Kitchen's award-winning roasted chicken. Homemade cooking at its finest, with lots of sweets and goodies at the counter to go. Country Kitchen is a great place for birthday parties, meetings, or just to take the family when you're out and about. Their huge menu has something for everybody, and their warm country home atmosphere and small-town charm will take you back to simpler times. Thermont Country Kitchen satisfying and delicious. You'll feel right at home at Thermont Country Kitchen. Thermont Country Kitchen is a proud sponsor of local high school athletics on the radio. High Low Auto Sales with locations in Frederick and Mount Airy and our new location in Cockeysville, Maryland. We specialize in high quality vehicles at low prices. All types of credit, financing or leasing. You drive away with peace of mind in a vehicle with a High Low Sales 6 month 6,000 mile warranty. Find out about the High Low difference at one of the leading independent automobile dealers in Maryland. That's High Low Auto Sales. We look forward to serving you at HighLowAutoSales.com. This can be a busy time of year. Running around getting ready for company, visiting friends, or spending time enjoying family. We are all too familiar with a growing list of errands that need our attention. Gary the Barber knows how busy life can get, and so he makes sure that your convenience and a great haircut are first on his list. Call Gary the Barber today. Gary the Barber has hours to accommodate any busy schedule. 301-305-7895. Hey, everyone. Gary the Barber is open for business. Just call 301-305-7895 to make an appointment right away. That's 301-305-7895. Get a great haircut today. Airlines have just reduced their prices even more. Book 30 days in advance and save big. Want the absolute lowest prices on your airline tickets? Then call the low-cost airlines travel hotline right now. For prices so low, we can't publish them anywhere. The only way to access our low rates and save up to 70% is to call. Save hundreds of your vacation tickets by calling right now. You can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 802 341 4526. 802 341 4526. 802 341 4526. That's 802 341 4526. Cool Oldies 1450 
KCHU is the leader in high school sports broadcasting. Since 2008, we have broadcast more high school sporting events than any radio station in the four-state area. Football, basketball, baseball, and softball. Regular season playoffs and state championships from Southern PA to Brunswick, the Western Mountains of Maryland, to the Eastern Shore. Cool Oldies 1450 THU is number one in high school sports broadcasting. We are back with you here live at Ligonor High School. The halftime is over, and we are ready for the inbound pass. Cougars controlling into Taylor Smith. The start of the third period is underway. The Cougars have a one-point lead. An immediately shot from Taylor Smith out front. In and out, loose ball tipped away. Cougars get it back. And Ligonor came out in a little half-court 1-3-1 one -one trap there. And the Cougars were able to uh, adjust to it, and they'll go back to their man-to-man -man on the inbounds pass. Beautiful cutter underneath the score, Brooke Williams. Same play as the first half. They're just on the opposite side. So lingonor has got to tighten up the defense on those inbounds pass. They're not switching or, or they're not covering that cutter very well. Mitchell off the cutter, bank shot off the glass and in. That was Colburn. That was a Colburn. three. That okay. was a three, so it's a tie game. From the corner, Cougars take a look. Over to Orndorff. She has it knocked away. Cougars ball. So uh, one thing we notice, the uh, Lancers playing tight defense right here. Yeah, they uh, they picked it up a little bit on the defensive end, their intensity. Tie game 26-26. We've got two baskets in the first minute of this half. It took a while to get there in the first half. Into Orndorff. She goes out front. Kicks it over to Williams. Williams shoots on the run. Has it partially blocked. In and out. Gets her own rebound. Backs out. Kicks it out to the corner. Bounce pass back into Williams. Has it tipped away. She pivots. Gets trapped. We've got a whistle and a timeout. timeout Cougars. 30-second timeout. Coach End whistle. Seeing that the Lancers have gone to this trapping defense now. I think she wants to just get her ladies, uh, ladies settled down a little bit and figure out how they're going to attack those traps. Yes. That's her first timeout, so she's got four more. Uh, did not use a timeout in the first half. Coach Easterday used one. Um, you specialize in, in seizures, don't you? <laughs> got a young man having a seizure right here in front of us. I have a pediatrician right here. He's, uh, he's dancing and uh, <laughs> enjoying himself at the game here. The ball's coming in. Triggered into oh, the wide ball. open, Orndorff, she nails it, nothing but strings from three-point land. Yeah, she got loose at the three-point line and did not miss. So we've got better shooting going on right now than we did the whole first half. Out of the flex set. Cutter, block, Grace Williams pulls it down, she has it stolen back by Wilson. Wilson to Lindblade, Lindblade underneath on the cutter to the hoop, and she misses. Loose ball, rebound, Taylor Smith has it knocked away, and a whistle. Going to go against Linganore. Fouls on Meg Hummel, number five. That's Meg's third foul. So she's the first person with three fouls. Boy, they're just, they're unable to convert those layups. Uh, Linganore, Meg Hummel had a pretty much a, a bunny and just couldn't put it in. Now Linganore is going to pick it up full court. Glottfeldy brings up as Linganore relaxes the press. Glottfeldy down on the right side. Bounce pass out the other way, stolen and a whistle. That's going to be Hummel's fourth. She reached in. Wow, F four fouls on Meg Hummel. She plays a lot of minutes for the Lancers. She's going to probably have to sit at least the rest of the third quarter. That's huge. Into the game comes uh, Kaylee Lake. So Lake into the game, Hummel out, and it's also the second personal foul on the uh, on the Lancers. Into Smith. Smith looks, drifts right. Underneath on the cutter to Glottfeldy. She steps back, shoots, no good. Rebound, Lancers. Lindblade, baseball pass down court. Intercepted by Taylor Smith. She comes back the hard way with a three on one. Pulls it up, has it stolen away. Loose ball on the floor, scramble. Timeout, whistle, Cougars will get it. Yeah. No, they signal Lancers. I believe Rebecca Zentz is in the game and I think she, when she got possession of the ball, she rolled back onto the end of the baseline. So it's Lancer ball. Into Lynn Blade. She brings it up. 29-26 at the 6.05 mark of the third period. Cougars on top. 
Down on the right side. Colburn lobs inside, Mitchell scores. Nice, nice, it, nice high low ball there. Got a good, a good angle on the entry pass and Mitchell just sealed and laid it in. That's how the Lancers are gonna beat the Cougars if they're going to. Taylor Smith, no look. Lockbelly shoots from three point land. Too hard, rebound. Mitchell, here Mitchell. she goes. Mitchell coming hard. She goes over to Colburn. She goes to the basket and she's fouled. Fouls on Glottfeld. He's trying to get back. Colburn will shoot two. 5.36 in the third quarter. 29-28, Catoctin. Colburn shooting a pair. Colburn, one of the leading scorers in the county. She got it. Nice touch on that, uh, on that free throw attempt. Tie game. Got them both. Nothing but net on both of them. Just a soft touch into the net. Smith, she brings it up. Crossover, kick it out. Grace Smith goes to the hoop. Misses the layup. Rebound. Nice Colburn. look up by Outlet, Blade. Wilson. Wilson misses the layup. Put back by Mitchell. It's no good. She misses. Put back by Mitchell again is good. And the Lancers take a three-point lead. Lynn Blade uh, with really good vision on that, getting the ball up front. Smith bringing it up for the, for the Cougars. They're trying to get in their half-court set. Wilson sets a pick. Smith goes. She loses footing. Back to Wilson. She shoots. It's good. Grace Williams from out at the top of the key. That was a nice play by Smith to realize that on the switch, uh, the person who set the screen would be open. Lindblade between the legs. She looks for the pick. Drives left, pulls up and shoots on the run. Hard off the back iron, no good. Put back by Lake. Lake. And now the Lancers starting to dominate the boards as Smith goes hard up the court. Outlet to Williams. She rolls it out. Loose ball. Lindblade with a baseball pass down court. Knocked down by Wilson. Oh boy, over to Colburn. And Smith does the shot saving sacrifice which will send Colburn to shoot two. Yeah, the Lancers have uh, really dominated the offensive and defensive class. And so uh, they've got extra second chance points down here. And then on the defensive end, they've been able to uh, uh, limit the Cougars to one shot. And there's a timeout by the Catoctin Cougars. Looks like another 30 second timeout by Coach Entwistle. Gonna try to make an adjustment on the fly here. Yeah, and indeed she should because right now, uh, Easterday, Coach Easterday has figured out how to have the advantage over the Catoctin Cougars, and that's that with the two bigs. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that early on in the first uh, half, remember, Michael, Catoctin dominated the offensive glass. They were just able to get multiple shots, multiple shots. They're getting limited to one shot, and then because of that, the Lancers are releasing guards. Uh, they're able to basically rebound with their two big people. They're releasing people, and now they're able to... Uh, uh, now they're able to hey, get down. Damn it. Hey guys, watch that court. All right, we're back. Colburn to, shoot. Colburn to shoot two for the Lancers makes the first. So it'll be interesting to see if the uh, Lancers might even pick up full court here coming out. Got them both. Nope, they're dropping back. Lind, Lind Blair, or no, uh, Bowers. Once again, they're in like a 1-3-1 now. The Lancers are going to 1-3-1. Going to make the Cougars beat them from the outside. Working around the perimeter. Orndorff shoots. It's good. Orndorff with a three. Yeah, that 1-3-1, that, uh, they weren't able to really match up well, and Orndorff just buried a three. In the Mitchell. Colborn off the cutter. Oh, another bank shot three. That's two for her. Yeah, she's out. Back the other way, per hatch from the corner. No good. Loose ball up in the air. There's a scramble. Jump ball. Possession arrow goes to Linganore. Once again, one shot and one shot only for Catoctin at the offensive end. And now there's a timeout on the court, and it is... Linganore. Linganore is going to take a timeout. It's going to be a full timeout, Michael. So, All right, we'll step aside and be right back after this break. Stop it. 
attending church since 2020. This is Matt Staver with Freedom's Call. Government officials imposed COVID-19 restrictions against houses of worship about three years ago. As a result, these restrictions have apparently precipitated an overall decline in religious worship attendance. In fact, a recent study reveals that approximately one in three Americans have stopped attending in-person church services since the lockdowns in 2020. The data showed that only 13% of Americans reported attending in-person worship services in the summer of 2020. This increased to 27% by the spring of 2022, but the rates of worship attendance were still lower than they were before the pandemic and subsequent lockdowns. The lockdowns had a negative impact in our communities and many churches. All right, we're back live and we just saw Kaylee Lake get yep. another offensive rebound and put back for yes. the Lancers. It's the seven point lead now for Leonor. So it's been all Leonor in this third. Taylor Smith has the ball. She goes baseline hard, kicks it cross court. Straight to the hoop, pull up. Having trouble. Three Hold point up. violation. Three second violation. Uh, I mean three seconds. Yeah. yeah. Normally Thank they you. don't. Normally they don't call that on the person with the ball in the lane. But yeah. uh, and Coach Entwistle's uh, disagreeing with the referees. Uh, but here we go now. It's now ballooned to a seven point lead for Linganore. This is a real danger time for Catoctin. They got to figure a way to kind of inch back, cut this lead down. So Catoctin, who led throughout the first half, now underneath. And a shot from out front, and there's that rebound put back. And you know the difference in this third period is number 14, Julia Mitchell. Right to the hoop. Catoctin misses the first, misses the second, then Taylor Smith gets a rebound and is fouled. So Smith will shoot two. And the Cougars miss two layups in a row. And for Linganore, it really is uh, the dominant inside play of Mitchell. And, and then Meg Hummel picked up a lot of fouls. And Kaylee Lake coming off the bench is really combined with Mitchell to dominate the uh, defensive glass. And then on the offensive end, get some putbacks. Yeah. Smith makes the last one of two. Down court. Lake goes hard. She travels. Now that pass was given to Lake, one of the tallest players on the court, about 15 feet from the basket on the run. So yeah. she just really couldn't gather herself and, uh, and make a basketball move. Yeah. Plot belly brings it up down on the right side to Williams. Williams lobs inside to, to Smith. Smith back out to Williams. She's wide open. She drives the pull up. No good. Loose ball, Williams gets her own rebound, and she's fouled on the putback. It's Lake on the foul, that'll be the Lancer's third personal foul. So that's Grace Williams with the putback. And she's gonna be shooting two. As you pointed out, from the field, she makes the first, and from the field, the Cougars don't shoot particularly well, so they gotta find ways to create extra shots. That's either gonna be defense and rebound. She misses the last one, makes the first one. Wide open, Trinity down court, straight to the hoop. Scoop shot doesn't go. Rebound, Grace Williams, she's tied up. Jump ball. The ball possession, Catoctin. That was Jessica Mitchell coming down. And Crab just, uh, doesn't like it. Just tying up uh, uh, the Catoctin Cougar. And uh, coming back in for uh, uh, is Brooke Williams, for Grace Williams. I'm assuming they're sisters. They I, are, I, yes, yes they are. So, uh, and I uh, remember Emma Williams, that name ring a bell? Yep. From That's the third. Year, yeah. She graduated last year. All right. So Taylor Smith really looking to go right. Emma Bowers with a nice job of cutting off that right hand uh, dribble drive. Straight to the hoop goes Orndorff and she gets the roll for the bucket. So one thing I'm seeing in this half, Michael, is Linganore will not come off of Taylor Smith. So Orndorff did a really nice job on that play of driving towards Taylor Smith. Stolen by Taylor Smith. She's got a two on two. She goes all the way, loses the ball. Loose ball on the ground. Glotbelly comes up with it. Glotbelly shoots the three. It's good. It's Dirt. good. She drains the net, nothing but rope. 43-41 all of a sudden. Ho, ho, here we go. 
Bowers brings it up. Bounce pass underneath to Colburn. She scores. No, in and out. Loose ball off the leg of Bowers, and it's Cougars' ball. And boy, that was a missed opportunity. Yeah, no, uh, Colburn from point blank range misses the layup. And Spellman's now going to come in for Lindblade. And uh, number 35, uh, Delaney Andrews coming in for the first time for the Lancers, spelling Kaylee Lake. Lake played some good minutes uh, in place of Meg Hummel in this third quarter, but uh, you can tell she uh, a little bit winded. She really did, and here comes Taylor Smith straight up the middle of the floor, left-hander, crossover. She loses the ball, stolen Spellman. by Spellman, and then it's knocked away, and oh, Cougars, there's a ball on the floor, there's a scramble for it, still a loose ball, out of bounds, Cougars get it. Wow, what a series that was. Starting to look more like the second quarter again. Yeah. Everybody's going too fast. Lingenor just needs to grab that ball, hold on to it, and reset. Instead, they tried making the difficult passes, end up with the turnover. Glottbelly, she's at midcourt. She drives right off the pick. Guarded hard by Spellman. Bounce pass to Williams, stolen by Spellman. Spellman with some good minutes. She gets tied up, kicks it over to Lake. Lake up to Spellman. Spellman, top of the key. Bounce pass, Lake on the high post. Handoff, shot from the wing. Too hard, loose ball on the floor. There's a scramble. Cougars come up with it, stolen away by Linganor. Another scramble, tie up, jump ball. Possession arrow goes to Linganor. And I think they're going to call that the end of the quarter, so the Lancers will start at the beginning of the fourth quarter. So at the end of three, it's Linganore 43, Catoctin 41. We got one quarter left of this high, hotly contested girls high school basketball game. What an exciting game this is. We'll be right back, folks. Bauer, Washington, D.C., with your end of day report sponsored by American Values. Today we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. We honor Dr. King in part because he recognized that despite the original national sin of slavery, America is a fundamentally decent country that has brought hope, liberty, and prosperity to millions of people. It was a powerful argument. Most black Americans believed in America and our founding documents as much as white Americans. King and other civil rights leaders merely wanted black Americans to be included in the promises of the Declaration of Independence. He did not attack our founding fathers. He embraced them. King correctly said that skin color should not determine our place in society. He did not ask for a racially separated nation. He wanted a country where race was seen as a difference that did not matter. He famously dreamt of a time when all of us would not be judged by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. Sadly today, so-called progressives insist... All right, we're back. The inbound to Lindblade, straight to the hoop. Colburn is fouled. She'll shoot two. So Lancers came out in the third quarter and really dominated the first four minutes. And then we said that Catoctin was in a danger zone. They were down by seven, but they cut it back down to two. And so we'll see what these next, this next four-minute period ends. Colburn Miss. shooting two, misses the first. Yes, she does. So the Lancers have Mitchell, Lake, Colburn, Lindblade, and Wilson. Got the second one. The Cougars have Williams, Smith, Glottfelty, Orndorff, and I believe that is Zentz in the game. If Taylor would just go all left, they're giving her the left. Skip pass in the corner. Williams steps back. Zents with the ball. Down Zents. To, down to 10 on the shot clock. Zents, she pulls up, shoots. Air ball underneath. Rebound Cougars. Kick out. Williams on the run. Off the glass, no good. Rebound Cougars. Tipped away. Cougars get it back. So they get a fresh clock, too at the 724 mark of this game. Cougars getting back on the offensive glass, Michael. That's what, when, Ling when Linganore was able to extend it, they were limiting them to one shot, but now that's three shots on this possession. Five footer, bounces out, rebound, Smith Mitchell stolen. Williams has it and scores. Taylor Smith on the basket there. So it's a 44-43 game. Linganore got the rebound, couldn't get the outlet pass. Now they're running a 1-4 high set. 
Lynn Blade from deep. She got it! That's Lynn Blade's first tray of the game, and she got the range for herself. Smith loses the ball, backcourt violation on Smith. She dribbled off her own foot, and it just creeped back over. Yep. So that's going to be a uh, I, turnover, an unforced turnover, really. I'm not a fan of Taylor Smith running this offense. I think Taylor Smith has the strength and the size to be down low. I think they've, they've done pretty well when Gladfeldt has been bringing yes. the ball up and able to initiate the offense. Mitchell out front, over to Lake, hits the cutter to Colburn. She shoots, scores, and gets the and one. That was Gracie Wilson on that. And that was off a 1-4, a flex set, and it was the flex cut coming across. She and got it delivered right on the low block, turned and laid it in. And the key to that is it's back to a six-point lead as Coach Entwistle calls timeout on the floor, a 30-second timeout. So, yeah, I mean, Kruger's battled to within one. And then, uh, then Linganore now is kind of using this first couple minutes to extend it back out. Yeah. Uh, Coach Entwistle, I think, is probably trying to use this timeout to even get a little rest for her maybe somewhat weary players, have to run it. If I remember that state championship game when they were so competitive through three quarters, Michael, they, they kind of ran out of gas. Well, they ran out of yeah. gas because they don't have a deep bench. Yeah, so they need to, like, you know, figure out how they're going to get extra breaks. And I think she has three full timeouts, well, now two, that she can use, and uh, uh, I think it's going to be key when they get the ball back in is, like what you said, maybe like Gladfeld to bring it up and let Taylor Smith get down on the low block. When she's on the low block, the Langenor defense collapses, and as people cut to the basket, they get easier shots. And as we pointed out, we see Norndorf make a three-pointer. If they, if they all collapse and they kick it back out for an open three-pointer, they have a much better chance than if they're shooting it under pressure. They got pressure. Gladfeldy, they got Orndorff, they got Grace Williams. They can start shooting out front. And then they can go underneath. When they come out front, they can go back down to Brooke Williams. Gracie Wilson makes it for the three-point play. In the glot belly, over to Smith. Smith brings it up slowly. Down on the left side to Orndorf. Orndorf, she brings it center court. Williams out front. She drives, pulls out, kicks it to the baseline. She shoots. In and out, loose ball up in the air, rebound Lancers. Baseball pass to Lindblade. She scores. No, it bounced out. Loose ball. Cougars have it. Williams fires it down court, wide open. Shot on the run, off the glass, no good. What's the call? It's uh, out of bounds to Linganor. Uh, Taylor Smith made a really nice pass to uh, Grace Williams, who just couldn't finish it. And then the rebound, Taylor Smith knocked out of bounds. Up the lake. Lake brings it across midcourt, fires it down in the corner to Colburn. She goes baseline, turns out, hands off to Mitchell. She scores. Jessica Mitchell came from the three-point lane, just drove straight down. Nine-point lead now for the Lancers. Cougars back with their own score. Taylor Smith right down the court, puts it in. Back to a seven-point game with five and a half minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Lindblade brings it up, directing traffic. They slow it down now. Bounce pass. In the flex set. Mitchell, no back. look underneath, Lake scores. Back door cut by Lake, came off the flex cut. She saw that they overplayed it, she went back door. Mitchell hit her for the layup. Straight to the hoop. Taylor Smith shoots. The putback is good and a foul. I, and thought, Brooke, Smith, I thought Smith got fouled on that. But she did. Brooke Williams got the rebound, and made she the basket, got and got fouled. So Brooke Williams with a chance for the and one. And Kaylee Lake's coming out after having a great uh, a great second half so far for the Lancers. And uh, coming back into the game, Meg Hummel with four fouls. And uh, uh, it looks like uh, Emma Bowers is coming in for Blindblade to give her a break. Williams makes it. Six-point game. Spellman brings it up. Bowers. Bowers, my bad. Down on the left side. Lobbed underneath, stolen by Brooke Williams. Good play, and a whistle, and a foul, and that's gonna go on Colburn. No, Mitchell. Jessica Mitchell on the foul. Colburn tried to feed her, but telegraphed the pass. You know, that's one, Michael, where if you're gonna throw it high, maybe a fake low throw high, or you fake high and throw a bounce pass. Instead, she telegraphed it, and Gracie Williams just came overplayed. We've got a timeout, official timeout. There's a clock problem. I think they were actually unclear who actually had that foul called on them. 
So now they're uh, actually got it straightened okay. out. Yeah, you're right. All right, Cougars will reset and inbound again into Orndorff. She brings it up, unguarded. Bowers meets her at midcourt. Down on the left side to Perhatch. She looks underneath. Out front to Taylor Smith. She lobs inside to Brooke Williams. She goes right-hander, in and out. Rebound, Lancers. Has it knocked away, stolen on the floor. Shot, put back is good by the Cougars. And they've been living underneath on that defensive putback. Perhatch got the second shot, down to four. Linganore brings the ball across. Bowers trying to set up, running the flex offense. 4.45, looking for Colburn, not there. Over to Mitchell, Mitchell looking, nothing. Back around the perimeter they go. Bowers backs out, she goes left. Hummel, she drives the paint, pulls up, shoots on the run, in and out, loose ball over the top. That's Hummel's fifth, she's out of there. I believe you're right, Michael. Coming over the top after missing the shot, that's gonna be Meg Hummel's fifth personal foul, and it's gonna bring Kaylee Lake back into the game. So Hummel fouls out at the 426 mark of this game. Cougars will inbound with the ball, down by four. It's also the seventh foul on the Lancers. Now oh, so we should walk. This will be interesting yeah, and to the, see. The who, reps have figured it out. On, who's the shooter on this one? Whoever was driving to the basket, and I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. So uh, Meg, Meg Hummel came over the top of somebody on loose ball, and, and uh, to Katoxen's credit. Looks like Gladfeldy. No, Katoxen's credit. They're sending uh, Brooke Williams to the line. and uh, No, it's Gladfeldy. Or is it Williams? I can't tell. I believe that, that's Williams. Ponytail's in the way. Yeah. Got it! Nothing but net on that one. Yeah, it is it is Brooke Williams, you're right. Lindblade back in, short rest. Three point game, Cougars 51, Lancers 54. Williams with a chance to trim it to two and she does. So we're right back where we were at the beginning. We are, quarter. right at the beginning. Bowers brings it up, guarded by Orndorff. Right across the center circle, she drifts left. Looking for help. Nice. Oh, beautiful cutter underneath. Reverse layup is good. A nice reverse layup by Colburn. Colburn got the feed from Bowers. Defender turned her head. Taylor Smith comes down. Perhatch shoots from three-point land. It's good. It's good. It's good. 56-55. Kylie Cougars Perhatch with the tray. Cougars won't go away. Lindblad brings it up. What a heck of a game this is. Lake on the high post, lobs underneath the Bowers. She kicks it out to Colburn. Colburn drives, goes with the scoop shot, no good. Loose ball, rebound, put back, blocked, and looks like Mitchell will shoot two. Jessica Mitchell fouled on the rebound. Tristan Colburn went baseline and tried to scoop shot. Uh, defense had collapsed on her, so on the weak side, the rebound, uh, Jessica Mitchell was on the low block all by herself. Oh. Oh, she gets the shooter's bounce. That ball hit the back rim and bounced five feet up in the air and went right straight through the last actually, open strings. Now they're saying that it actually hit the standard. So oh, well, the, then that's out of bounds. No well, basket. They waved it off. And uh, I Interesting. Think I, I think I can see that actually. I've never seen that before. It, actually, it, happened, it seems to happen a lot here in Linganore. I'm well, not the, sure. They that, got that strange thing hanging down there in front of the, the basket. It's the that it hit. And, uh, yeah. So Mitchell with the second. And she missed that one. You got a whistle. They said it hit. Uh, they said it hit that standard again. It did it because it's moving. Look at it. So it's going to be Catoctin ball down by one with three and a half. Boy, left. did they get a break on that one! Wow. Orndorff fires it over to Glaffeldy on the left side. Glaffeldy bounce pass to Williams. She posts up, backs out, looking underneath. She drives off the pick. Loses the ball, gets it back, shoots, no good. Rebound Lancers. Over to Lindblade. Lindblade slows it down. 56-55, Lancers by one at the 316 mark of this game. Lindblade brings it up, top of the key. She drifts left, bounce pass. Lake on the high post. Lake kicks it out. Colburn off the pick. She steps back, bounce pass underneath the Lake. Lake, and then there's a tie up and a loose ball and a traveling violation on Linganor. Great defense by Orndorff. Uh, Orndorff actually took the ball down to the ground, so it's going to be Linganore basketball. There's not a shot clock reset, so nine seconds left on the shot clock for Linganore. So watch for the cutter right here. Coming back into the game for uh, Catoctin is Rebecca Zentz. Zentz is going to briefly replace Orndorff. So watch Mitchell on this one, because that's who they're going to try to get it into. And we've got an official timeout 
as the refs want to talk I something think, over. I think they're discussing possession and shot clock, which I'm almost sure it's not going to be a, a possession and a reset. Okay, three minutes on the clock, 56-55. Linganore has the ball. Lindblad will, un Lindblad will inbound from underneath. They did reset the shot clock, so 30 seconds on the shot clock. Out front, Bowers. Bowers backs out. Lake on the high post, looking for the cutter, not there. Lake, she goes to Colborn. Colborn drives, shoots in and out. Loose ball, knocked away. Krugers come up with it. Taylor Smith down the right side. She goes around the defense and dribbles right on the line and loses the ball in the turnover. Trying to go a little too quickly there. So two and a half minutes left. Lancer with the one-point lead. Both teams struggling to get some points here towards the end of the game. Into Lindblade, backcourt. She brings it up. Looking, no look, high post, Lake, underneath Cutter, stolen by Brooke Williams. Williams needs help. She gets it over to Glotfeld, he hands off to Smith. Smith brings it up alone by herself. She goes right hand, down in the corner. Brooke Williams goes baseline, bounce pass underneath the per house, is knocked away by the D. Yeah, nice rotation by Tristan Colburn to get down on the low block, knock it away. Shooter Orndorf coming in for uh, replacing Zentz, kind of an offense-defense thing right now. 20 seconds on the shot clock for the Cougars. Into wide hatch, wide open from the corner, in and out. We've got a whistle and a foul. That's going to be a three-point foul. Closing out on that three-point shot, Jessica Missel just let her momentum carry straight through. Now, I'll be interested to see, is it a three-point or are they actually going to call the on the floor afterwards? And it's three. Three free throws for Perhotch. Oh, she misses the first one. Perhaps to shoot two. While these look easy, Michael, at this time of yeah, the game, no, it's a lot harder. This is pressure time right here. Gut check. Got it. Nothing but net. So we basically have a two-minute game right we here. We have a two-minute game. That's right. Tied at 56. Two minutes and 16 seconds left. Perhach trying to put the Cougars in the lead. Cougars with two fouls. To, well, one foul to give. And she misses it, and the rebound, Colburn. Here comes Bowers. Bowers, guarded by Glotfeld, he rifles it over to Lindblade. Lindblade on the wing, back around to Mitchell. Bowers has it. Bowers, Colburn out front. She goes to the basket, tries to scoop it, and she's fouled. Blocking foul on the Cougars. Blocking foul on Perhotch. Perhotch was just one one step short of being able to take a drive. She got pretty deep. So Colburn to shoot a pair for the Lancers. 155. This game's going to be decided by free throws. And she misses it. Three straight misses at the free throw line for the Lancers. Yeah, that's it's tough for these ladies. This is pre these are pressure shots. Gracie Wilson back in for Emma Bowers. Colburn to try to give the Lancers the lead. Nothing but net on that She one. does, 57-56. Here come the Cougars. Taylor Smith, she goes left. Crossover right, down in the corner, wide open. Smith pulled, Orndorff, in and out. Rimmed in and out. Here comes Lindblade, outlet to Colborn. She scores. No, she missed the layup. Rebound, stolen. Williams has it. Williams goes hard. She goes right-hander off the glass. No, switches over to left and has it blocked. And the crowd loves it. Kaylee Lake coming from behind with the block. Minute and 32 seconds remaining here. Catoctin with the ball, 26 seconds left. Perhotch for three. She misses, in and out, loose ball up in the air. Who's got it? Cougars got it. 126, knocked away by Lindblade. Lancers trying to dribble out through traffic. Just need to hold on to that ball. Possession is key here. Cougars with the possession. 28 on the shot clock, 123 on the game clock. In the Smith, over to Perhatch. In the corner, Williams has it. Right corner, she backs out to Perhatch. Perhatch drifts left, dribbles, penetrates, has it stripped away and stolen. Outlet, wide open, Colburn. She goes up right-hander, scores. Three Big lead. steal right there by Mitchell. Three-point lead. Perhatch tried to drive, Mitchell stepped in. Straight to the hoop, Taylor Smith is stuffed. Outlet, Lindblade, she's open, she scores. 
Back-to-back -back fast break steals, and they open up a five-point lead, and Coach Entosa has to call timeout at the 52-second mark. Yeah, it's actually a Linganor timeout, a 30-second timeout. Michael, what was happening there is Linganor clearly, uh, you know, was getting possession of the ball. Actually, they're making it a full timeout now, it looks like. Uh, yeah. They were getting possession of the ball, releasing people, yeah. and uh, because Catoctin was trying to crash that offensive board, trying to get it, uh, they were unfortunately unable to, uh, you know, like rotate back and transition defense. All right. Got to love this game. It's been back a real, and really a competitive game. Really man. competitive. Great game. Great game. Both teams hustling to the ball. Those last two steals and converts were huge for Linganore. Just just backbreakers. You know, the Lancers, uh, you've a couple of times anticipated a, be a layup being made. They had similar plays where they did not convert those uh, those outlet passes. So here on these last two possessions, they were able to convert them. Uh, I would say that a five-point lead is anything but uh, safe, uh, comfortable. Well, <laughs> particularly because three possessions of one and one for Linganore. Mm -hmm. We've now mm -hmm. seen the, like, the Lancers, they, they are fallible at the line, right? So there's a possibility that they don't yeah. convert. So it is Cougars ball. The Lancers missing Hummel. She fouled out at the 426 mark in the Orndorff. She brings it across midcourt. Cougars set up their offense. Orndorff drives and has it stripped away and stolen. Here comes Lindblade on the run. She uh, travels. And what Lindblade was trying to do, she was actually trying to do a really smart move there. Yeah. It was this, almost the same scenario where they had a long outlet pass. She should have just jump stopped. She was going to try to like let the clock lead and unfortunately dribble, uh, dragged her pivot foot. Smith falls down, loses the ball. Linger, Linger comes up with it. Now stolen, stripped away by Orndorff. It's on the floor. There's a tie-up jump ball. Possession arrow to Linganore. Catoctin, Catoctin. Catoctin? I can't see the... Oh, yeah, yeah you're right. It is Catoctin. I can see the table now. It is. Uh, Linganore's doing everything they can to give Catoctin a chance. 27 seconds. Here comes Glotfeldy. Glotfeldy to Smith. She shoots. No good. Rebound, Linganore. Outlet, stripped away and stolen by Orndorff. She has it. She brings it back up, fires it over to Williams. Williams with a step back. Oh, in and out, in and out. And Lindblade is fouled at the seven second mark. Wow, it's, a, uh, it's an amazing, uh, amazing couple of possessions there, Michael. The uh, Cougars certainly had an opportunity. It's a one and one for Trinity Lindblade. Why? There's only six. It's actually seven that was sitting at six prior to that. All right, there it goes. Now I see the seven. All right. So Lynn Blade with the chance to extend the lead. She does. The first. Now it's a two-possession two game. She makes this one three possessions in seven and a half seconds. Yeah. I think it's it looks like Linganore, Linganore has pulled this one out after a big scare. Here come the Cougars, Taylor Smith. She shoots the three, way out front, not even close. Loose ball up in the air, rebound Linganore, and there's the buzzer. That's it! The Ling Linganore Lancers have defeated the Catoctin Cougars 63-56 to here at Linganore High School, and the Lancers move to 15-1. and one. We'll be right back for our post-game wrap-up after this message from our wonderful sponsors. Center of Life Chiropractic in Pilates, located on Water Street in Thurmont, serving the community since 1993. Center of Life is dedicated to treating the whole you, and not just your symptoms, back pain, neck pain, injury, or you just want to improve your mobility and feel healthier. Dr. John Hageman's innovative approach to whole body health is completely unlike anything you have experienced. With convenient hours from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and afternoon hours only on Tuesday from 3 to 7.30 p.m., Center of Life is there for you. Center of Life is closed on weekends and Thursdays. Center of Life accepts all major credit cards and uses the honor system so you pay what you can afford. What 
What an amazing difference they will make in you today. Center of Life. Make an adjustment to your life today. Center of Life is a proud sponsor of local high school sports. Welcome back to Leonore High School. Congratulations to the Lancers. Big victory here tonight over the Lady Cougars. Uh, wow, what a game this was. Uh, it was uh, At one point, it was tied up with two minutes to go. It was anybody's game to win. Yeah, I mean, there was a game of runs, but it really was, oh, the game was be, was dictated by, or whoever was dictating the pace of the game really determined uh, how the game was going. And so, so we saw runs during the game where the where Catoctin really turned it into a fast-paced game. Mm -hmm. And then when Linganore was able to settle things down and get into their half-court set, either their weave or their flex offense, they got really good shots. Not only did they get good shots, but they were in position to get offensive rebounds. And that's when, when Linganore dominated the glass is when they got all their points. So they brought Carrie Lake out front for high post. And then she turned around and waited for Mitchell or Colburn on the cutter, and that worked for them the whole second yeah, half. Yeah, and, and uh, she, as you pointed out, she's one of the tallest players on the court, and Linganore has three girls that are just about her size, so so there's going to be a mismatch somewhere. She was literally able to stand at the at the elbow or between the elbow and the three-point line and look and see over the defender to make that yeah, pass. So, absolutely. So from my perspective in, in looking at her contribution, uh, she – probably in the role that Meg Hummel would normally be in, but she was able to make that entry pass to those cutters or to the people on the low post, and that's something that Catoctin kind of suffers from. They want to go up-tempo, they want to go up-tempo, Taylor Smith's bringing the ball of court, things like that, but they never really get somebody on that low block in a consistent half-court set yeah. that they're able to score yeah. from inside, because I think they do have some pretty nice outside shooters, Orndorf, Gladfelty. People like that who, well, Williams, if you yeah. could get them an open shot, they're yeah. going to have a pretty good chance of uh, making them. So uh, some adjustments, I think, as they're going in the postseason is they really got to improve their half-court sets. Yes, they do. They do. All right, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be headed over to Catoctin High School next Tuesday where the boys will do our first boys game of the season. The Catoctin boys will face the Brunswick Railroaders at Catoctin. Tip off at 7 p.m., so you don't want to miss that game. Congratulations to Linganore. They move into a tough part of their schedule. Catoctin has eight more games, uh, two of them against number one teams. We're looking for a, a January 21st Tuesday night championship at Hood College where one of these teams here tonight will be playing for a girls' championship, and it's most likely Linganore. Yeah, so, those are those. if you've never been out to those games, yeah. uh, Hood College, the gyms get packed. All the all the referees, all the players, everybody shows up, and they're they're almost always entertaining games. Yeah. So uh, coming out to Hood College on the 21st and see the boys girls championship doubleheader. Girls tip off at five, boys at seven, and that is a big one. So that's it. That's a wrap on behalf of the entire Cool Oldies 1450 team. I want to thank you for tuning in. My name is Michael Betteridge here with Mike Reinick, Tyler Wilhelm upstairs. And we'll be out of here. Have a great evening, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next Tuesday at Catoctin High School. Don't worry. If you can't make it to the game or miss the broadcast, all of our high school sports games are archived and available online at WTHUradio.com in our audio vault.